Today we're looking at cutting tools. I get asked a lot, uh, what do you use to cut leather? Um, the answer normally is a knife, uh, but it does very much depend on the type of leather that you're cutting as to what tool is, is best for the job. What do I like to use? Well, it does actually depend on the leather. If I have a, a thick piece of vegetable tan leather, like this uh, piece of sort of sole bend here, um, this is half a centimetre thick and is a, a very solid piece. What I'd use to cut this and what I'd use to cut this milled piece are two very, very completely different items. So that's what we're going to look at today. So the first tool that I got when I first started doing leather work um, a thin piece of veg that we have here. First tool I got was a small utility knife, which was this. Simple, easy to use utility knife, um, reasonably sharp, it will cut your leather. Does a job, absolutely fantastic. Nothing wrong with this tool at all. The next thing I got was a bigger one, which is just a Stanley utility knife. Yeah, again, does a job. Um, replaceable blades, quite inexpensive. Uh, this is a plastic handle. It's not the best thing to use. It's not the most robust. It does have a bit of a wobble to it, but for cutting, absolutely fantastic. Wouldn't use this on a soft piece. Not something that I'd, I'd try to use on a, a soft piece of leather. Um, then you get into the more exotic realms of things that you can use. Um, we have things such as uh, scalpels. So here I have a selection of different scalpels, scalpel blades, scalpel handles. Uh, work absolutely fine, nothing wrong with using this for your detail work. If you have done something that does require a very, very fine hand and is very thin for me to get through, this is going to take me probably three or four strokes, but it will cut through it eventually. Um, the main reason I'll use this is if I'm doing any carving, if I do my feather work, then I'll, have my, I'll make my feather and then I'll use the scalpel to cut and then literally feather that bit up when I'm doing my carving work on that. Other than that, I don't really use this tool. Uh, it's a good tool, it's good just to have something, a little uh, sort of exacto blade, exacto set, something like that. Uh, it's always good to have something like that in your sort of arsenal of tools just because it is exactly that. It's a good tool to have. Um, the next thing we'll look at is the saddle maker's head knife or the round knife and the first thing you do when you buy a round knife is you make a sheath for it which will cover it. This particular blade um, is sharp from from this point here all the way around to this point here. Um, very very useful tool, it can become very useful uh, you can use it for cutting, um, so use the, the palm heel of your hand to apply some pressure, you're going to push forward on a slight forward angle and it, it'll cut through most things including your fingers if they're not kept behind the edge that's the old adage of um, I remember my schoolboy pledge keep my fingers behind the cutting edge and it really really rings true with this blade it is exceptionally sharp, it should always be stropped um, just to maintain its sharpness it's very very good, what I find is exceptionally good for is skiving so you can get your edges down, you can get them nice and thin just from using this um, you know you can get pushed through it, you get people that say you can get some beautiful calves with it you can do, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of patience and I personally have found a tool which is better than this however this is a, an exceptionally good tool to make I do recommend is when you finish using it the first thing you should do is pop it back into its sheath I just keep it safe and secure, saves you from dropping it, saves you from accidentally catching yourself on this and it, it keeps it out of the way. Um, two of the tools I want to look at are the uh, world's most dangerous pizza cutter which is the rotary cutter which is a, a, a sharp disc that can lock into place, this particular model locks into place. This is what I'd use for a thinner leather or a liner so this is a, an upholstery piece, very thin, very similar to cutting a fabric um, with this, when you cut it, it will cut exactly what you want it to. If you're using something like your 
utility knife, this is one from Tandy Leather, it locks into place, it, you can remove the blade very easily, it locks back in, he says, and it folds closed as well, it's very good for one handed operation, um, I use one of these every day for general usage, um, but if you're using a pull blade like this, or a push one, being your head knife, when you try to cut a straight line, it will snag, and you will not get a straight line when you cut with it. Um, you know you can sort of clamp your clamp your work down but as you can see on that on the gridded cutting mat underneath that's not a straight cut uh, it does it does hook out uh, which is quite useless to be completely frank which is where you want to use something like this and you can also get your curves and your turns with, with that knife as well on purpose and you just get your straight line um, my favourite knife get on to my favourite knife is the clicker knife Clicker knife gets its name because a clicker was uh, an old skilled person um, before the sort of machines came along and took the jobs. And a clicker would you'd pass them a piece like this, and you would tell them that you you have figured out you can get ten of this shape from this piece. And a clicker is the person that will get you twelve, and you'll have no uh, very little scrap left over. Um, the way how this knife works is it handle and screws releases the piece here you then turn the blade around pop it back in and just screw it back up tight um, this is fantastic blade it's curved has an inward curve on it um, and you sharpen it up when I use this I tend to hold it yeah, again in the palm heel of my hand apply pressure on my finger quite close to where the blade is and this middle finger tends to sit next to it. This acts for two reasons. It acts as a guide to whereabouts I know where the cutting edge is and it will also help me to hold the leather down that I'm going to be cutting. Again, this is a, a quite a thick piece. Um, I'll probably take a couple of uh, sort of pulls through on this, but you can get some very nice curves with some very little effort on that. And that is a exceptionally thick piece of leather if I use uh, just back to this piece on here you can get a very nice curved cut on purpose um, this particular blade I have sharpened up that it has a it's a very sort of fine curve so it's not very wide which is what we want so I put it as strong as a Stanley as precise as your exacto And then that bit there you can see is nice and polished just on the edge of the first sort of centimetre. It does have quite a mirrored polish to it. My favourite knife is the clicker knife. Um, I recommend that anybody working leather sort of invests in in one of these. You know, get get hold of a clicker knife or an industrial knife is what handy leather sell them as. And that is something which is probably the best knife you'll use great for cutting patterns out to what it was designed to do you can get very precise with it like I say if you're cutting your veg tan brilliant for it anything thin any sort of lining materials that you may have anything like this it's not ideal for that but that's where your rotary cutter or your world's most dangerous pizza cutter comes in fantastic tool fantastic piece of equipment um, yeah any comments or questions leave them below I'll try to answer them the best I can